Welcome. Welcome back, folks. We appreciate you for joining us once again uh, for another show. And like I said, uh, Priya, this one is close to the hearts of many, including um, the wonderful Christina Marley and Thompson, a.k.a. Chrissy Love. Can I say what I want to say? Go ahead, please. Fuck y'all. I'm still here, despite what you tried to do to a sister. Mm. Who are you talking to? Anyhow, I guess they know who they, they know. is. They, they know. Show. Uh, they oh, oh, really? Well, I appreciate it. Now, if they put some skin in the game, they need to put some put some money if they want you know the show to keep going. Because I, I tell you, I was sitting here, I was sitting here a little while ago. I said, today is Thursday. Do I have to do a show today? Yes, because I really, I really just wanted to uh, chill out. Because boy, lucky, it had been a long day. You know, it's a busy time for me. I just wanted to really relax and chill out. But boy, you know, I say, you know what? Some people they just hit too. me up. I listen, I was running to people on the street, just random people. They just come up to me. Hey, I watch y'all all the time. I love the show and I appreciate it. And so good. I say, mother sec, all these people. So I say, you know what? For the people, let me uh, get myself together and come in. And especially for this topic, too, is, is such a, a, a serious and important topic. I think we really need to discuss it. Um, and I see some bitter people that was supporting um, beating children last week saying, oh, well, all kind of children getting molested. Y'all don't want to talk about that. Y'all want to worry about beating children. So oh, guess what? Her. I ain't going to call nobody name. But you had people saying that. Uh, and, and guess what? We're talking about it today. So we we covering all the issues that we need to cover. And what really sparked it is, a, not apparently, but there is a child molester loose, apparently, in the Anglistan community. Um, I think there was a six-year-old girl that was molested in April. And then another, if I'm not mistaken, eight-year-old was just uh, molested on Monday pass. And the report on Monday. Wow. We ain't serious in the Bahamas. Not at all. I mean, at, at least nasty. it doesn't appear that we're serious about this particular issue. And, you know, a lot of people are concerned, as they should be, especially in that community. Um, and, and I see people and, you know, what we do when, when something happens, Chrissy, the first thing we want to do is we quick to blame. We got to point fingers. We got to find somebody to blame. And I see a lot of discussion being had about, you know, people letting their children walk to and from school. How the fuck uh, they can get to school? We'll see. And this is this is the thing. Now, this is this is the discussion. Thanks to y'all not developing the country, people got to be walking to school. I remember when I was home, I used to see them little five and six year old little guard angel on the road. Anyway, child. Well, the thing is, I, I, to be honest, that's how I remember I used to go to Delma Gibson when we were living in Yamakura, Delma Gibson and Elizabeth Estates. And I remember being in little primary schools doing little boy because um, I was what, five and in the first grade, five, six, seven. So I'm like five, six, seven, eight years old. And I walk in home to and from school as well. So mm -hmm. but then again, that was a different time. You it know was a I mean? different time. And Yamakura yeah, to tell me, Gibson, you know, it was a different time. It's a different community. Uh, we Bahamians don't want to acknowledge our descent into shittiness. Uh, communities are different now. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, we don't, um, we don't believe in uh, punishing people for committing wrongs against innocent children. So that was actually one of the one of the first protests that I was on was because of um there was a case I think again where I was a, I think it was another 6 year old girl that was uh brutally raped uh, five molested. Years. Yes, and the guy only got like 5 years in prison and we were out there on Rawson Square with our our signs and our placards because we felt that was ridiculous like in me and this was this was a while back. Um, Kaylee was just a small baby then. I was a new father then. I, but I was like, case. I was like, how how could you get five years? And he reoffended. Really? Bitch. How 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 soon after? Um, when he came out of jail. Uh, not not long after. See, and that's the thing. What? See, and this is why this is what I don't understand, right? Um. Because in some cases, you probably have people getting more time for a joint or something like that than they're getting for than these child molesters are getting. And I, I don't understand who wrote these laws and what they were thinking at the time. Or is it at the discretion of the judge? No, the thing is, the laws are written uh, by men and women, the legislators of the day, the draftsmen in the AG's office. There's never been a prime concern for these kinds of crimes. Because unfortunately, a lot of these crimes are also committed by people who are in high society as well. And sometimes the laws 
uh, work against the average citizen. So mm -hmm. if we wanted to change these laws, these are simple things. But I can't change the law when my brother, the big time government official, molesting all the gals in the neighborhood and I won't bring it to the light. Mm. We some sick motherfuckers. We some sick mm. people. Yeah, we are. We, and we have some we have some deep rooted serious issues. And that's, you know, last week we touched, touched on some of them. And it's just a cycle of hurt people just continuing to hurt people. We all uh, damaged in some way, shape or form. Well, let me, let me, let me not say all, but a, a good all. number of us. All. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> you want to oh. say all. a great a great number of us are, are damaged um, psychologically, physically, spiritually, all the leads you could think about. We have a lot of damaged persons, and this is why we are not progressing very much in this society. And the hard part is we are damaged, but a lot of people are not recognizing it or admitting it. A lot of people walking around saying they're fine, saying they're normal, saying nothing's wrong. They're just going around pretending as though nothing is wrong. When we clearly have some serious deep-rooted... Like, I never understood how a grown man could molest a six... And I mean, listen to ages we're talking about here. Six years old, Chrissy? Eight six years old? Well, you have Bahamian fathers who are screwing their own blood daughters. Like that is that is I don't and I maybe I need a, to speak to a psychiatrist or a psychologist. No, no. I don't they understand if it's people are sick and they do have you think these urges mm -hmm. that um you know the Bahamas unfortunately and I laugh at this no matter how much we uh are bad and horrid and rapey and AIDSy we're still very conservative as a country. The Bahamas is a conservative country. And see, when you express these, um, you know, because some societies allow you to fuck young children, it's no big deal. There's a whole group of Ooh. pederastists and all kind of people in some countries where it's okay. Really? Um, we have a lot of people who have their certain uh, kink, borderline, uh, psychotic that they can't let out into the public. And mm -hmm. so that's why it's all kept hush. We have a, a whole island of people Mm -hmm. who are known for the high rates of molestation, pedophilia, and incense. Mm -hmm. People who haven't baby for their granddaddy and shit. And mm -hmm. Bahamians know this, but we all shut up. So, see, you no. speak out against it, and many others, I speak out against it, many others do, but people mm -hmm. like to keep that kink right in the closed doors of their house. Well, let's talk about that, because um, while uh, this one, this fresh one is... Apparently, a stranger just going around trying to, you know, grab kids and molest them. Let's talk about the instances that happen more often. And this is the cases where the perpetrator is known to the victim or oftentimes, like you said, family Most members cases. of the victim. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like this one. This one is probably probably an outlier where someone is, I Not guess, a stranger. Outlier, I, can. I mean, <laughs> to be honest, like if 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 you had to guess, like. The cases of molestation, uh, if you had to guess the ratio of those just, like, let's say one person just preying on children he doesn't know going into the neighborhoods versus the ones that happen inside the homes by caretakers, family members, like, what would you say the ratio would be? Um, I think, like, 80-20. See, and that's what I'm saying. Like, most of them tends to be from family members or people uh, that are close to the victim. But you even the I mean? random, Greg, even the random, for example, mm -hmm. everyone's all before this recent case came up, everybody was talking about the Marco Archer case, which, by the way, has many layers to it. People don't like to talk about it. But um, again, the same person who's been charged and everybody's all upset that he is being given this leniency. He did that before and was let go. So, again, I don't understand why people are shocked at these outcomes. You know, it, it's it's. <sighs> It's shocking, I guess, because, well, again, some people probably don't know. Like, I didn't, I don't know a lot of these people are repeat offenders, you know? So I think in a lot of cases, it's just not knowing. Like, some people just honestly don't know, or they just hear about this particular one for the first time, you know what I mean? So not everyone knows, like, you, you, you know about these things, you know what I mean? You're I'm into working in the media. I mean right. Right. So you being in the media, you are more in tune and know more. So you would be like, you know, why are you all surprised? Because you hear about it all the time. But genuinely, a lot of us don't know the degree of which it takes place at, at this high rate. Yeah, but then there are scientific factors that tell you most pedophiles will reoffend or, 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 or re recommit the crime. Mm -hmm. This has been proven scientifically. And people say, oh, you just can't write someone off. 
Mm-hmm. And again, in the Bahamas, what we do that irks me, like before this uh, six-year-old girl that was uh, attacked, the eight-year-old was attacked, the six-year-old got away, I think. Isn't that the story? Anyway. Yeah, I think I think this was the most recent one. I think the most recent one got away, like, or right. somebody intervened. Like, because right. um, I heard the news report and the guy said he took her uh, around the back and he didn't get to penetrate her because right. I guess somebody saw and they intervened. And so, you know, that, that's how that one went. I right. think that was the most recent one. If and I'm the eight-year-old um, who it did happen to, you know, again, we, um, we don't do any kind of rehabilitation. We don't do, you know, I have a major issue with the Bridgewater case. Um, I talk about this on your show, on my show. The fact that this man had offended reoffended and still is now out and about living his life. While well, for was, those for those that don't know, just tell us about the Bridgewater case because I don't think I'm thinking. The case is the case where the six year old girl was found wandering around. Uh, I don't. He snatched her, I think, from Centerville, but she was found wandering around the BC power plant on Blue Hill, and he was uh, put in jail. Uh, no rehabilitation, no castration, no saltpeter, nothing to cut his courage. Uh, I know people say you're being cruel. When you chemically mm-hmm. castrate, you don't have to cut off someone's penis. You can chemically castrate them. Although I personally mm-hmm. believe you should cut their penis off, stick it in their mouth, and then sew it up with fishing line. <laughs> That's just me. But he got no treatment. He came out five years later. He reoffended. I think he went back to jail. And then he was let out. Um, and uh, he's authorized palm tree and everybody. I think he lost his job at the gas station, though, after the public outcry. And so the thing is, we have no registry of sex offenders because, unfortunately, some of those sex offenders would be high-ranking members of society. And, you know, we Mm. don't want that to happen. And so Mm. the thing is, we aren't serious about it in the legislature, in society, and just in general, how we feel that people who've been abused, molested, mistreated are disposable. You remember Mm. the Grand Bahama case? Look how long those families had to wait for justice with the missing boys in Grand Bahama. Yeah, that was um, you know, long. We, we just have a, a history of sickness that we don't want to address. Yeah, I don't know why. And because uh, I was about to ask why you think that's you think okay, how about the, do you think it's well, hold partially on. What's because ratio? what's your ratio? Mine is 80 20. What's yours? Mine, I uh, to be honest, I really. I, I think I would be right around your 80 20 as well, or maybe 85 15. Um, I think I'd probably lean more to the, you know, uh, uh, family members, you know, people known. Um, okay, G, can reach? I just gonna, I gonna call out just now. I see a comment, but I she ain't reach yet, so I just gonna show you just now. I see the comments, is. Greg. You can't yeah. see them? They right there. Kira. 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 Hey, I just, met, I'm so late. I have to do it in my car because my Wi-Fi is cycling. Sorry to jump in the conversation, but y'all, it's taking too long to read comments. So. <laughs> glad you're here. Look, she got the eyebrows done, honey. I look, girl, it looked like a hot, like a tone. Come on, line ten minutes. Ago. Listen, you should have, and you—that's the thing. I know you was, you was up the whole she time. When she asked, "I could be on camera." Look, her. in a way, you get this done in the fifteen minutes you asked me that. So you was already fix up, and you pretended like you was in fix up. These pretty I was girls telling myself, <laughs> I was telling myself, it was like a call in, and then when you said that, I was like, "Oh, I gotta go. I gotta get the <laughs> Wi-Fi." Yes. How you doing? Awesome. Long time, no speak to. Too long, too long. But I'm glad I come to this one because this is a, one of those topics. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It and is. it's something people don't like to talk about. For some reason, we shame in the Bahamas when it comes to anything, when it comes to sex especially. And that's what I was about to say, Christine. Perhaps we don't uh, deal with these issues because, you know, sex is involved. And, you know, sex is taboo in the Bahamas. Any form of sex sexual uh, intercourse we like to hold on now we can't hold say on. that to, to the Attention, point where people nasty pedophiles underage people don't have sex with big ass people there's no consent factor that's Thank nastiness you. Yes. nasty people always jump and people and the attitudes here toward pedophiles to me is so disgusting because people always jump to villainize the little girls like oh she too hot she too fresh she too like man and and no one ever says like bro but your boy is like 33 and we just be going by dw davis to pick up this girl like okay that's not weird like that's not we ain't talking about that and it's always talking about the woman it's because we just have to we have to use so much of our energy to hate girls i guess i don't know yeah misogyny is real but then again um, remember uh 
when you look at even statutory rape, you see these big gray ass rusty man in front of the schoolyard picking up young gals. I'm going to say for the record, some parents are culpable too, because a lot of parents are selling their daughters to these old rusty ass men because mm. they like teens. I hear that too. So the thing is, the fact that we know this happens in society, we have seen again high ranking people like how many uh, old teachers back in the day married their young students. But we don't want to talk about it because because they they are the the Smiths and the Johnsons and the, now these ain't the people real name. See, we don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. So many people in the upper echelon partaking mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. you know how much nasty damn old man back in the day married their young students. I didn't know. Yeah, it's hardly see their period and shit. No, I, I didn't hear know. about it. I, hear I haven't about heard it. about it. But but guys have been taking picking up girls from uh, school from I was in R and I remember. Girls, you know, hopping in these cars and they in my grade, you know, we in grade nine and thing and they hopping in these cars with man who picking up. I like what the hell is going on here? It's crazy how normalized that is. I never had like a big growing man because I was scared of sex. Like my mommy ruined that for me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> good mom. So, no, say good mom. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was very effective. Uh, but I had friends who like dated or like interested in dudes and stuff and it never once occurred to me. And I talking like, we in 10th grade, 11th grade, it never once occurred to me that we used to be telling all of the boys like our age, and we'd be telling you all, Greg, like, you can't even buy nobody no Wendy's. Like, yeah, all. exactly. We used to have meetings like, whose boyfriend is bringing Wendy's today? Wow. And I never thought about it. Even when we grew up, like, we grew older and like, we're in our early 20s and stuff, I never even thought about, like, my doe, like, so and so boyfriend was 21 or 22, or, you know, those are normal ages. Statutory break. Yes. Great. I was 13 years old in 10th grade. Like, we were children. Yes. We were smart, too. But nothing, it, it, it doesn't seem as though anything happens to these men. You know, it, it's Not just that they, they continue to carry on. And like Kira said earlier, all of the judgment seems to fall on the girls. Mm -hmm. Like, they are the ones who we attack as opposed to the men. They, no one talks about the men. It's all yeah. all these little hot, fast guys. You see, and, and it goes back to that video we talked about last week where she was beating the child. And you see, they keep she's stressing, well, you want to be with man? You want to yeah. be with man? So it's like, it's all of the judgment falls on the girls. Exactly. And, and Kira, you were telling me you were in a group and you were seeing some comments uh, from people. And so I guess it was a different yeah. issue. If you can, let us this know which is, uh, issue you're referring to and the comments you saw. Right. So there is a group um, that I'm a part of, and they were discussing, you know, the recent rapes of the younger girls. And someone had brought up another case of a 15 year old girl who was being molested by her mother's boyfriend. And she got caught, well, they were caught in the middle of a situation in her kitchen. Uh, she walked in and he, like, got his pants down and, like, right on top of the girl or whatever. And the mummy was angry with, with the guy of course but of course still angry with her daughter like what the hell are you doing and the response in the group was that oh yeah these pedophiles are gross or whatever one or two women said that but for the most part people were saying oh the mommy needs to cut the girl ass because she know right at that age you know just what you're doing you know just what it is or if she doesn't freak out or act a certain way then i mean she likes it and i'm like i don't understand why we're always so quick to jump to the fact that if there's sex involved that a woman was one looking for it and if she was looking for it that something was wrong with that but in in a situation where she's being taken advantage of that this is someone of sound mind and i'm like if you were a teenager first of all no one had any information about the case outside of what was shared, which was that this girl was caught with her mom's boyfriend, and they and shared that happens people. a lot, a lot. And that happens women to people keep like their daughters know. out and keep their man. This wow. is exactly what I'm saying. Everyone that I had known, that, and it happened a lot of people. But when I was younger, it happened to two girls that I know, and they both had to leave their mommy house because they too fresh and they juicing and they um seducing the boyfriend, and I'm like. How do you seduce someone when you're 15 years old? I mean, like, whether or not somebody, I know everybody bought, not everybody, some of these little girls' body be right and tight or whatever when they young. But as an adult male, it, the responsibility still rests with you exactly. to conduct yourself as the adult in the situation. You know, little 14-year-old puny chest little boy 
could come to me with his broke self running <laughs> around. <laughs> hey, listen. You you ain't what the what the parking boy need, man. You, oh, you yeah, ain't running bobby. to that parking boy. You want to place you with that bobby. You better catch yourself calling these calling these little boys broke. You're not money, sweet girl. You better catch yourself. Sorry, let me stand corrected because he was ducking <laughs> off the dollar bills. <laughs> video. You want him? You want to make it rain on you in the food store? Hey? <laughs> you put it on Facebook. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Chris, why you think we hate girls so much? Why do we tend to attack girls first? Well, we, we live in a misogynist country, but the thing is, again, as someone who has been through this, what happens in the whole conversation on uh, young girls being approached and attacked by older males who are of legal age is that the biology of the young girl kicks in as well. Because here's the sickness with molestation or abuse or incest. Because your body is betraying you by telling you it feels good, Mm -hmm. you also are mixed up in your head. And when you're 13, 14, 15, 12, whatever, you can't process them kinds right. of emotions. And society right. vilifies you for your body doing what it is programmed to do. But then, like mm -hmm. you say, the hatred of women and girls, that stems from, I guess, from, especially in our country, where we had women and girls not just being property and chattel, but also women and girls were we're not really considered a full human being with agency because we always had men telling us what to do. Even when those same men didn't have rights. Remember a lot of the rights that we have first, it started off with white men, white women, black men, then black women. So, you know, mm -hmm. again, the, the, the women, the woman part of it has always been one where you never had agency over yourself. Mm -hmm. You were property and chattel. So the misogyny stems from that. Mm -hmm. And remember, you have countries like uh, they used to do it. Uh, girl children were seen as a liability. Remember, we had countries that would actually kill their newborn girls. So girls all over the world have always been seen as a liability. Misogyny is rampant in the Caribbean. But um, this has always been the narrative for girl children. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's just historical in nature. And then our legislators don't change anything. So that's why it continues. Mm. It, it's yeah. it's 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 like levels of sickness. Uh, Black Velvet Fergie says, and nothing was reported. Let me keep my one daughter out of Nassau because that prison, you know, God ain't big enough to hold me. I would f the entire place up, <laughs> man. Over my daughter, know that bastardized mofo knows better. Lord, let me tune out the day. <laughs> it's an emotional subject. It's very. It emotional. is. It is but, very. But many, many women, and again, I, I have called out many Bahamian women on this, and that's why I'm this pariah now in the Bahamas. But many women put doggy before they churn. Yes, but my Chrissy, tell me something, and I wouldn't know. Doggy, that sweet man, to put, yeah, put, put before your churn. Maybe Kira could help me. I must say, I'm no good doggy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. My one son, ain't nobody bend me to the left or to the right in the right direction to mix up my priorities. But you want to see me ruin your life? Try it. You want to see me, right? You, you, I don't understand. Yep. I, I don't get it. You know, Kira, maybe the, you know, maybe in your generation, people look at things. I know I grew up in the uptight generation. Remember, I grew up in the uptight generation. You know, my Grammy tell me that you know. Um, if, 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 you know, if only the cloth must touch it on there, nothing else. Only the cloth. Only the cloth. <laughs> Which cloth she was talking cloth. about now? Yeah. So we grew up in a more sexually constrained I environment. Say. Mm -hmm. No, sorry. Well, my... I, miss, uh, I miss what your Grammy say because the signal was breaking up. Oh, uh, only the cloth must touch down there. I grew up in a very uptight conservative Bahamas, but the irony is that these same uptight conservative people Grammy was having five children for five different men, and Grammy best friend sometime was the baby. Thank you, but so, so you know, we've lived this life of lies for so long that it seems normal. Mm -hmm. And that's it. And I, yeah. and I wanted to get to that. We we often judge, uh, at least we often quick to judge, but a lot of people don't think about. And it's not an excuse, but it's just trying to understand the issue as a whole to be able to resolve it. Um, maybe the women that put doggy before their children, what, what has happened to them in their past? What backgrounds do they come from? What, what abuse did they receive? True. What, you know, what, what have they been around? You know what I mean? They, 
two to one, they probably came from extremely dysfunctional environments as well. And they don't know what an order is. They don't know what it, what a parent is supposed to do. So, and it's like I said last week, and like, uh, uh, like I said, the comedian said, it's like, it's too easy to make a human being. It is more difficult to make a croissant than it is to make a human. You know what I mean? And, and the one thing that we all love to do as human beings, that one desire that we have, the result of doing that creates a human being. And maybe that's the issue. It's so easy. People just round the place juicing and raw dogging and having sex all over the place, having children, ain't capable to take care of their children, ain't know what it is to be a parent. And so, you know, the ch that's children come up in these environments one. and then they just continue that's this cycle. Yeah. But also it's, it's society yeah. as well because there are women who have done it. Uh, like the women I know, they came from good homes, good fathers, uh, two-parent homes, whatever that means. It's just society's reaction to... Their expectations uh, the too. On the right, home. exactly. Expectations mm -hmm. as well. It, what are some of those happy. expectations? Just that your daughter's going to be... Okay, I'll tell you. Let me use myself as an example, right? Me and my mommy polar opposites like if you were to meet her she's like a very demure non-profane christian sweet forgiving person and i'm okay sometimes and other times i just a beast and that's just what it is and so we very different she raised me and hello she freezing a little bit whatever right discipline repeat that for like oh, hold on you know, we miss we missed that. You got a uh, uh, last thing I hear was she raised me. Oh, okay. A better signal? I hear my signal must be bad. Yeah. We could hear you okay, now. Okay, so yeah. All right. So I'm saying that she raised me, but she's a completely Lord dead go again. <laughs> type of person I, I used to and even a lot of stuff that she does have a problem with now. Like I have a, like a loose mouth cuss mm -hmm. sometimes or whatever. It's mortifying for her because she's a lady. Mm -hmm. but it's when me and her talking and I'm making a point I don't usually cuss around her but if I were to and I'm making a point she is not in that particular but you let me be on Facebook mm -hmm. talking with something and he, my next you know, decent co-worker and her old church was like oh my god your daughter is she curses a lot or mm -hmm. she you know she talks about a lot of things or she just that pressure from her is, I think, on her is a lot of what used to motivate her back when I was younger, like a lot more susceptible to having to do what she say because she say more than her having those actual beliefs or having that much of a problem with what it was that I was doing or what mm -hmm. I thought about something. Mm -hmm. A lot of the times these women, before they even take a they, you know how many times these situations and the conversation devolves into who crazier, who would beat their daughter the worst, who would do this the worst and do that the worst, because mm -hmm. it's like a societal pressure to be this particular, do these particular type of people. Mm -hmm. And that's where people is like, and you have support. But it's the idea if people banded together to say, oh, yeah, I have other options of discipline in my child, but i rather friggin' hit them. Mm-hmm. That's their own issue. And other people like, normalize in the entire thing. So we're talking about children who are preyed on and taken advantage of and because you have idiots in this thread willing to say, oh, yeah, these young girls, this whole thing, thing, thing. Then mm -hmm. that's where the comment, stay right there. Mm -hmm. And it's sad. I don't know. I just yeah, saw it happen on, on Facebook. In Some of the things you see is like unbelievable. And yeah. you know, in, the, in, the, in the heat of the of the moment, I know we say all kind of things. I'll be stomping out till next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And I get that because in the in the midst of it, you are angry. You're worried. You, you're you fretting about it. But uh, again, I don't understand how, like, it's almost in vogue to shit on your children. I don't yeah. understand how that, that's like in style. Mm -hmm. It's Church. tradition. That's what we've been doing for decades. Yeah, for I decades. don't understand. Like, you know, You've been doing it for decades. In front of everybody, like you know, seeing everybody like seeing. I I don't get that. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I always used to say though to my my uh, when it happened to me, um, why we need an audience though? 
Like, what, what mm -hmm. that made of? Like, what yeah, you want to show people how it's bad... It's a cry for attention, Chrissy. When you don't yeah, get attention exactly. as a child... See, a lot of times, remember how we grew up, you know? Mm -hmm. Go sit in the corner, children are to be seen and not heard, or just sometimes not even seen. You're supposed to just be quiet. You don't have an opinion. You don't have a voice. You ain't supposed to get no attention. You're just an accessory at times and an inconvenience in mm -hmm. other times, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. when a lot of people become adults, they still have that urge for that attention. And so they would do anything to get that attention, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Um, let me run through a couple of comments. Indira G. Taylor says, we have to re revamp the way we teach about sex, relationships, and personal responsibility. Young men can't think it's okay while young pe women are taught that they are going to hell because they crabby jump when they see someone attractive. My Lord. <laughs> Black Velvet Fergie mm -hmm. says, I can agree to disagree because how many children a woman has and the amount of men should never get confused with the principle and morals of being a mother and a woman. Never that bond of that child grew in you uh, for six to nine months. Okay, well, you know, that's fine. Um, and Dira says, if your mouth slack, your mother would be pleading to the blood of Jesus uh, over me. She Kira. does She does. <laughs> Olive oil and everything. My life is just, she got covered. <laughs> like we ever said, yes, in denial, it should start somewhere and it would be with him. New laws, higher sentences. Well, I agree, you know, mm -hmm. we need new laws and higher sentences, but then again, uh, we where is that? Where does it fall on the priority list for them? You know what I mean? Where how does it long, fall on priority list? How long we've been saying this? And what does anybody know what Jin is about systematically addressing it? Like, is somebody a rapist or something? Like, why are we just not doing it? What's did I miss something? Did I miss something? Well, according to Chrissy, you got a couple of them in there. Oh, well, you know, I was late. <laughs> so in, in an independent Bahamas, in an independent Bahamas, there have mm -hmm. been men who have skeletons in their closet. And so if you're a legislator, remember the laws reflect the, the feelings of the time. If I'm a legislator and I have certain things that um, I am ashamed about or, or things that I love to do, girl, be careful, girl. Look who see at that window, girl. <laughs> Lock your door. <laughs> it was like... You know, the thing is, a lot of people are going to fix the law uh, after something affects them, unfortunately, we have yeah. had selfish legislation from 1973. It's, and mm -hmm. I use 73 because that's the point of independence when we were able to make our own laws and mm -hmm. we had our own uh, yeah. independence. But, you know, the thing is, what it's going to take for us to change these laws, like you said, when that man got five years for assaulting that six-year-old, that was ridiculous. Uh, mm -hmm. So what's, what's it going to take to make the laws have a, a, a registry? Because right now, you know, you don't know what kind of sex offenders and pedophiles and rapists walking are walking around you. Um, yeah. You know, working. And right now, out. like, it don't make no sense to even call the police. Yeah. Like, that's the last person to call somebody to my baby. Something because how you could look at me and tell me you give this person six years when I still healthy and strong and get a couple of dollars when he come out of jail. Yeah. And they Why re call instead, they reoffend. Like, that's mm -hmm. exactly. that they reoffend. It, it's, it's a sickness. And the thing is, I one of the things that irritates me and Kara, you know, you and I used to talk about this too. This this fake kind of outrage and and disgust that we behemoths have, and then next week you gonna be right back to square one, letting your children pump water at three o'clock in the morning doing walking shit. Walking to and from school by themselves, these six seven year old so children. Walk in the group, because some children gotta walk to school. You know that that's the, re the reality. Mm. <laughs> but oh, yeah, I don't no. know what can be done. I'm here to talk to you guys just to find out how you feel because I've been having this conversation from 1979. So I fucking tired. Yeah, I agree. Oh, so I what? What? What can we do? like? Okay, you said some children have to walk to school. You know that is just the reality for a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. What can we do? Should we have like, uh, I guess, police posted? Uh, but then again, they may only be right outside the school. We don't know how far some right. of these children have to walk. Well, you got to teach your children. A lot of behaviors still don't teach their children about what are bad touches. Um, you know, what, 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 and just plus children see some real sick shit in the houses they grew up in. So mm -hmm. what is normalized mm -hmm. behavior? And Greg, you and I have talked about this as well. <clears throat> when you, uh, again, that normalizing of the behavior, that's why you say a lot of women who were beaten like shit as children, they grew up to have men beat on them and they think it's okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of the sickness okay. is normalized. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I pass me the, the salsa water, please. <coughs> I don't I don't know what can be done, but it has to start in the legislation. Yeah. But you know what you know what is startling to me, and I see Kantisha said um it starts with incest in the home. The amount of women that have been 
um, molested by family members, close friends as a young child is mind boggling to me. Like I, where anytime I hear, I'm like you too. Like how many of you has yeah. this happened to? Like it's yeah. ridiculous how much this takes place in this country, and it just goes by. And you know, people don't speak about it. People don't get reported, and it's like I get it. I I don't I don't rely on the young child to report it because that's a that's a that's a serious situation right there. That you know is. what I mean? It's just stupid. Mm -hmm. You this child is already scared and fearful, whatever. Like, like, I would like to know what's going on with that kid in the video. And I made a joke about it, too, Greg. You know how this Me Too movement is all over America? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when a lot of people, when I started doing these shows, and I want to thank you, Greg, for giving me an opportunity to finally speak my truth. Um, you know, I, you I said I was going to... Huh? So you've been speaking your truth, man. No, no, no. I was holding a lot of shit in before September, mm -hmm. November 15, 2016. Mm -hmm. I was holding a lot of shit in. Mm -hmm. Because I had to be Chrissy Love on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> anyway... But uh, a lot of times, you know, we say all these uh, cases of abuse that are happening, you know, we have a, like a YouTube movement in the Bahamas because it's like you just said, mm -hmm. YouTube, that happened to you. Mm -hmm. You'll be surprised mm -hmm. to know how many gals around here are walking around in Nassau mm -hmm. and throughout the family islands. Go to my home, go to my island. Y'all can hate me of Elutra. Check out the rates of incest in Elutra. Mm. You, will Ooh, you will scream and puke and people have been reporting it. But not a shit happens. So, right? I mean, we got whole keys of cousins on these islands. Like, mm. everybody looked the same. I know mm. where you're from. But I see you, like, it's serious. Like, it is serious. Now, of course, no, of course you can't have sex with your fourth cousin, I think. Isn't that in the law? What's the law? Oh, there's a law yeah. on it? No, well, in the, church, church, in the church law. Names. Come on, Kira, you ain't looking. You know we it have is the fourth said. cousin. It is. I think it's your fourth cousin. Your fourth cousin. I have cousins who tell me, say, child, long as you don't grow up with me, you are my cousin. Well, okay. I say you're all nasty. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> but some people honestly feel that way. Mm-hmm. Even when it comes to siblings, like sisters and brothers, like you know, people have children all over the place. And and they feel like, listen, we ain't grow yeah. up together. If you have Thank you, I never met you. That's the same. That's a no no. But mm -hmm. some people I know, you know have escaped a bullet. Like having cheering with their family members and luckily the cheering ain't come out special. Give mm. thanks for that. Yeah, mm -hmm. they lucky. I bring home a cousin before unknowingly when I wow. was younger. And the first thing my Grammy did when he walked in the door was like, Hey boy, hi granddaddy. We was like because <laughs> she hadn't seen him since a baby. Surprise! He didn't grow up as cousin. So I was like, oh, okay, so this is weird and this is over. So, oh, I was, everybody I, got I, You know what I was about to ask, right? Chris, Greg, you guys ask. So, Greg. did you stop? <laughs> Gregory. Yes. Listen to me. That was right before something had started. We oh, started. Oh, lucky, day. lucky, lucky. And my Grammy was like, hey. And I was like, okay, so you could just leave me here because I'm not being the one. We don't need it no more. Wow. That's weird. That but yeah, this place is, is small. It's small. And I never even knew I was cousins. But some people don't care. No. They don't be and worrying I... about nothing. And then, and then you have these predators that you say, all these family members and stuff. I know someone was getting molested by their uncle from they were like three years old and like he was having sex with her she was a child at four five she was five or six when she got break in from her uncle this and and didn't know and she was going there on a regular basis because nobody knew and these are people that you know and children is no you know because I had been in a situation where I was close to a pedophile in the family. And while, like I said, I always been a little ratchet one. So I had the juice, you know, I tell my daddy. Oh, I tell my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Did Kira just say she had the juice? Well, like, yes. I love Kira. I, Kira wants I, I still, <laughs> You want to find, I still be shielding. Uh -huh. But I was going to tell, but there was an energy around a particular individual. Like every time he'd be like, you don't want to come in my room? No. And I never felt that hesitation with other adults. 
not never, but not in that particular setting. So there is something that kids feel, but this is where you have someone who's older, an authority figure telling you not to tell or what to do, or this isn't weird. <coughs> it's hard for them to come forward. And that girl was there. She dealt with that for like 10 years or something like that, 10 or 15 Ooh. years. So she was a woman. That's before sad. she said anything. That's did he? Did the guy ever get um, um, prosecuted? Uh, her family didn't care. See, and this is this is what I want to get to because this is what this is why I think this is why so much of these um, cases go uh, unnoticed, unspoken about, mm -hmm. and it just happens. Is usually family members know, but they don't mm -hmm. want to say anything. And tell me why, Chrissy. I think we on the same page with this. Why the family don't say nothing? I know why. Tell me why. Well, I know uh, I've told you this before because Bahamians have a mm -hmm. a very high "I don't want to be shamed" factor. Thank and, you. Uh, That's very, exactly oh, that can, right there. That can't happen. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the so and sos. Mm -hmm. That can't happen to us. We can't have people talking about us. Mm -hmm. But yes. I still maintain Ground. the parents. Jesus is a Christian. Yeah, the mm -hmm. parents, especially I. You know, and people say I'm hard on the mother. As a mother, it is your role to know what your child is going through. And people have said to me, "Oh, Chrissy, mm -hmm. you can't call them trick bitches." I call you that because if you condone, like. I tell the story of a friend of mine who was telling her story and her mother called the person who was going to interview and said, why you want to talk about the family like that? That's our business. Do I know one else business? See, again, the sickness go deep. And like Kira said, they don't care because we ain't want to be shame and we ain't mm -hmm. want to talk about us. You know how many Bahamian women raising their granddaughter as their own daughter because they ain't want people to know their husband fucked their daughter and had baby. Wow. Anyway, mm, child, you really? a prize. This and I, I never understood. And this is why this is why I say all the time, you know, Chrissy, this this is what I keep saying. People don't care about the deed itself, you know, it's all about who does it. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. be, the exact oh, same thing would happen, but based no. on who does it, that, that right. would determine how people feel about it. You know what I mean? If it's somebody they don't know or don't care about, oh, we need to hang them, lynch them, kill them, string them up, and, and get rid of them. If it's their cousin or somebody they care about, oh, no, no, we need, we don't need to do it. But it's the same deed, you know. It's all, it all depends on who does it. This is why I, I can't deal with these kind of people. And that's why I say, listen, I ain't loyal to people, buddy. I ain't loyal to people. If you're looking to me to be loyal to you just no matter what, don't look for it because you can get your bubble boys. If you're doing stupidness and you're doing foolishness, mm -hmm. I report you, I tell it, and I ain't messing with you. I ain't loyal to people like that because that's what has us in this problem right now. These people too loyal to these pedophiles and their mm -hmm. family, these monsters, these predators they have in their family. They feel like mm -hmm. they have to be loyal because it's the family. We can't ruin the family name. We can't let people know that my brother does do these kind of things. And that's why a lot of these things, they, they just walking around like nothing happened. And Damaging walk around the lives. Bull. Big walk and bold. Empowered to do it again. Mm -hmm. Big and bold. People working, Sharon. I mean, if you and Chrissy, you know, you just know the tea would just be going around down here because you mm -hmm. know all these families. But <laughs> <laughs> I have known, like, small, like, you know, my little groups of stuff and things going on in people's house. I mean, I you have sisters who. Her one husband assaulting the next one, or one sister has been running through everything in the family, and one of your young sisters get pregnant, or this one get, and it's like everybody just going on like, like nothing happened, and then everybody get old, oh, automatically decent. Mm -hmm. Yep, decent is your uncle so and so now, and his Grammy so and so now, and his. And then plus we have, a, oh, we have Asia in in the Bahamas, and I guess because we're so small. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why the shame factor is, it ain't like here, like in America, if I do something shameful in D.C., I could go run to Minnesota. See, you can't do that. Yeah. And so I think that's it. The shame circle is even smaller. That's but my, my, I, you know what I don't get, right? And, and this is the problem here. Okay. Why do we attach, we feel like this sense of attachment to our family. Like, right, like if I have an uncle that is a pedophile and a terrible person, that has nothing to do with me. He is a pedophile and a terrible person. Mm -hmm. But we feel like, you know, that's a representation of us in some way, shape, or form. Like this, like it's this some kind, like I said, it goes back to this loyalty, the family name. Like 
we are tied together. Yeah. Like somehow, if this person do this thing, then that must mean I do this thing. No, sir. Mm -hmm. If you're a terrible person, you are a terrible person. Yeah, we may be family, but we are separate individuals. But we, well, we keep it secret because it kind of we feel like it reflects on us in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Well, you're mature. You've broken the chains. Kudos. Mm. But most people feel that yeah. my nasty uncle is a reflection of me or my nasty daddy. Why mm -hmm. is it that, like in certain families, three sisters being molested by their father, one sister speaks up, but she's the one who's vilified while the other two sisters well, shut up and yeah. continue to pretend? Because mm -hmm. you feel it has something to do with you. That's the sickness. And what does that yeah. say to, about the, the minds of the people that would vilify someone like that? You know what I mean? Someone, a victim is coming out and telling their story. That's, that's hard in itself to do. That's a big task within You're itself. You're trying to, to destroy the family. you try to destroy my yeah. marriage. You want, like yeah, you said earlier, you true. want my husband or my boyfriend. Or, what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please. And that's... And that, and, yeah, that's that's our you big problem. Listen, they people, don't see you as a victim in the first place. True. No, you fast. You they they, they say you wanted it. What you, you was know, wearing? You are looking for that exactly. Mm -hmm. Why you don't say nothing when your mommy come in all the time? You was a big girl. You wasn't gonna say nothing to your mommy if you didn't like it. Y'all must see this go. Mother <laughs> friend. Girl, girl that's it right there. Y'all must see this go. That's girl, that's mm -hmm. that's we sick, but I don't you know. We are. We are very it's, it's, sick. We are very sick. That's why. Cause it, no, go ahead, Kira. I couldn't sorry. take it. No, no I'm saying, if, just how y'all saying that we're such a sick society, and it is so true, which is why I had to jump out of the conversation when it started again, because it was like fresh off of the uh, abuse conversation. And I was just like, I cannot deal with the willful, like, and, and not just the willful ignorance of people, but just the damage. Mm -hmm. That you can't even see what you're working with, why you think the way you're thinking. You're not even able to step out of that. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know. I just get this hopeless, overbearing feeling. But but I you, really don't know how to even start to fix that in our society. But Kira, yeah. what was what was some of those things that you saw? Some of the, what was some of the comments that made you say, you know what, I can't deal with this. I have to get out of this thread. I cannot do it. Oh geez, what, what happened? Lord, we lose Kira right when I wanted to get this answer with these Kira's comments. Praise. She gone? Oh, okay, she come back. Hold on, wait. Let's see. Look like it coming back in. Okay, because she frozen on my on my phone. Well, she was frozen, but then she dropped off on this one. Oh. Okay, Kira, like I was uh, like I was asking, right? What what was some I of those like things? It. What were some of those things that you saw? That, that you can hear me? Can you hear me? Hello. We can see you. Kira, Kira, can, Kira. You can see her. I can see her, but she's frozen. She she moving around on mine, but she must see touch something where she can't hear us. Sha. Lot of mercy. Come true, be live. Come true. <laughs> <laughs> she missing touch something. Um, let me side. I can message her. I can message her on the side to see what she. Oh, do. she yeah. said I messed up something. Be right back. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see where she said that. But yeah, I wanted to ask her because, like I said, it was a there was a group, right? And okay, let's see if she get it fixed. Let's see. Testing back? one, two. Can you hear us? I can hear you all. Y'all can hear me? Yes, quite fine. Okay. Sorry, I was asking. I now I can't hear, but that's all right. Uh -oh. oh, you try to pull up the pictures. Oh, that's what happened. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I was asking, like, even, okay, even if you don't get the direct quote, because I sure no. you remembered some of the things, right? What were right. some of those things that made you just had to leave? Like, you couldn't take it anymore? Like, what were some of those comments like? Reasoning. Okay, well, I will tell you, I will say, first of all, what bothered me most was that these were mothers. And second of all, these were women. And I want to say this in the situation. So I don't want to vilify them. These young. Lord, testing one, two. Testing one, two. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Am I back? No, you're back, but you're Is breaking up big time. What kind of internet y'all got over there, man? Wait, listen. That's that Abaco internet. <laughs> I hear y'all. I hear y'all power always going off. Now y'all can't. Y'all can't get internet neither. My goodness, why are y'all staying there? How we could be great? How can we be great? <laughs> uh, I tell. 
Ah, Lord, ah, Lord. Okay, what to do, Kira? Uh, go ahead and if you can, because you're frozen right now, um, I'll drop it out. Go ahead and type, type in the comment section, and I'll put it up on the screen and read it. Um, uh, just a couple of the comments that you saw that really, you know, made you had to leave that thread and that, you know, made you not be able to take. Oh, should we got part two, Kira? Forward, forward, part two. Let's see. Okay, is this a new internet connection? <laughs> testing one, two. Oh. Testing one, two. Bye. Hello. That's Madeira Chalo. I must love you all. Oh, good. Wait, look how clear she looks. She in HD now. Chalo. Well, quickly. All I see quickly, so, oh, so, we don't, so we don't bust yes, up your data. Just a little two minutes. So, right. So I was saying, my little disclaimer was saying that, first of all, that these comments were from young girls. And they were, in their opinion, in defense. Not in their opinion. They were in defense of the girl in the story in question who was being molested by her mother's boyfriend. Mm -hmm. But what angered me was the fact that it was so clear that we don't have anything to work with to even sympathize or empathize with someone because the conversation where I left was a part where she was trying to rationalize that, oh, yeah, the girls, the girl is the victim because her mom's boyfriend shouldn't be messing with her, of course. But, oh, you know, maybe he broke her in and she just liked it. And so after a while, that's why she wouldn't say anything. And I'm like. I just don't get why everyone was jumping to, even if we're going to sympathize with this girl, we have to find some way to make her accountable right, for right. what happened. And that's really what caused me to jump out of the conversation because I just cannot engage someone else with mm -hmm. no foundation mm -hmm. about another important conversation. And this is something that affects you. Somebody with a young daughter, and then in the same breath, you want to say, I don't know why these girls don't say nothing. Because they have to talk to you, asshole. Exactly. That's why nobody says anything. So the person, the person criticizing the girls is yeah. also saying they don't know why they don't say anything. If she really didn't like it, she would have come and tell her, Ma, and look at the first thing you say. Mm. And the only thing you know is that the mommy walk in with the grown man on top of her child. Mm -hmm. And look what you say. And you wonder why these girls don't come out and say something and report these men. When the first thing you can say is, well, what you was doing, I bet you was cutting up on him or trying to like him or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Automatic response. Mm -hmm. We have a culture of, of victim shaming and victim Both blaming. And Especially then we wonder why these things don't, go, don't get reported. You know what I mean? Why would I report something when all I'm going to do is be faced with your... Critical comments with young insults. I'm already traumatized by this experience, mm -hmm. and now I must deal with what you have to say about me in this experience. And you're gonna turn me into uh, um, the the bad person Thank in this you. scenario. It's like, it. yeah, and that's 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 why I I it that surprised me that the person that's actually criticizing the person is also saying, well, why she didn't say anything. I mean, she can't even see that. Listen, maybe she didn't say nothing because of exactly what you're doing right now. Thank you. And and it only takes one, you know, one person go down now, hot pepper road. Mm -hmm. Everybody else just jumps down in a conversation and then we start seeing who could bash her the best, I guess. Mm -hmm. And it just, I just couldn't go back down that road. When she had started off saying that, oh, you know, maybe break her in and she like it. And these girls, she's a teenager. When you're 15, you know better. Wow. Um, when um, you 15, you know better. It's not like she's a little girl when you're 15, you know better. Oh my goodness. She know what she know what she was getting into. So and did she say anything about the man? Of course not. Of course not. Wow. So it's the 15 year old girl's fault. Wow. 15, yeah, the man's supposed to attack her and the 15 year old girl is supposed to gather herself and come in and handle the situation with her mother. And I wonder if they still together. Boy, I would like and you know what's so sad is likely that they are. That's it's, what I'm saying. Yeah. Because, because I know, the, the I know of cases where I, I know of cases where um, couples mm -hmm. where the husband or the man in the relationship is molesting a <coughs> younger family member. The mm -hmm. younger family member reports it and they stay together. She just, you know, makes the little girl feel like she's crazy or she's lying or she don't know what she's talking about or it didn't happen or and she just carries on with the relationship. And Christina, you have other children with the man yeah. and leave her children around the man. Yes. Chrissy, you can ask you just looking there. 
I don't think so. Lord Chris, you can't hear nothing. I can't, I can't see you or hear you. Oh, Lord you can't Chris. see or hear? What would happen? We could see I and hear you fine. I came back out several times. We can, we can, let me type it in the box here. Oh, we can uh -huh. see and hear you I fine. Can see you. I hear you. Uh, One day we'll get internet right. Boy, one of these. <laughs> but at least it worked for most of the show because we can we can end up uh, uh, wrapping up. She said, I can mm -hmm. see and sound is garbled. Hmm. Okay. Christine, you're all supposed to have the good internet over there, man. You're in the States? It's supposed to be us in the struggling I'm nation. Chris. <laughs> Gone again. It's supposed to be us. But yes, uh, I don't know. I, I really don't know how we can uh, fix this issue. Uh, I think it's going to take a complete mindset change a complete culture change and you know that takes generations and mm -hmm. a, a whole lot of effort a whole lot of time um i i'm not confident that it'll happen soon but um hopefully we can be more sensitive to these issues we can be more empathetic and we don't just attack um the victims in these situations because that's what causes them to be so quiet and that's what causes it to continue to go on and it the only people benefiting is the pedophiles and the predators mm -hmm. They're the only ones benefiting in this scenario because, you know, no one is saying anything. No one is reporting anything. And when it does get reported, they only get five years. They get these little light sentences. And so yeah. I need to hear murder. Yeah, yeah. And this is and I'm not like me. I, I and I'm like I'm like Chrissy on this issue. I support capital punishment. However, I have zero, well, not zero, very little faith in our judicial system. And mm -hmm. so. I don't want to see capital punishment because I know there's a chance that innocent people would get killed. Yeah. I because, get you on that, Greg. Yeah. <laughs> I get yeah, you. So, so it's kind of a, it's kind of a, you know what I mean? It's a funny yeah. Yeah. situation, you know what I mean? Um, but we have to do something. I'm going to try my best um, to try and get people to be more empathetic, um, mm -hmm. to get people to see different angles, different perspectives and look at it from a different way. Um, will it help? Who knows? You know, but I'm still going to do my part. I know you will do your part because I'm sure you were in those comments uh, trying to talk no, sense no. to these people. No. Trying to. And you know what I think the, uh, a good start for us to be, would be to try. I don't know how we're going to do it, but to find a way to humanize women and children. Mm -hmm. like we can't see them as people. And so everything that happens to them is just like a story. Happens to us, it's just a story uh, uh -huh. talking to Esau. It's not like, you know, it's not something anybody feels any urgency. Right. To, to isn't that, to. but isn't that bad that we in such a state to where, like you said, we have to um, teach people to humanize women and children. My goodness. Insane. The Every most... time I hear somebody tell somebody child what they're supposed to because they don't care mm -hmm. what they think or what they feel about something that is... Mm -hmm. that to me something i'm like this is a person this is a person this is not just like something you sit there with supposed to do what you tell it to do because you tell right. it to do it because that's what's convenient for right now or you know right just a tool I hope we get to a point yeah they have people have feelings and once you're able to acknowledge that then you don't have to approach everything as an, a situation that you attack or you know you deal with right, right, right. you are hot girls. You are right. dealing with your daughter or your niece or this uh -huh. this student who has this particular problem and you have the opportunity to be one on one with them and help them, not judge them as a stereotypical system of bad girls or fresh, whatever, or, you know? Right. And Savannah, I hear you, but I don't know if that's the solution. Savannah say, hang the say? murderers and chop the rapist doggy off. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, start, I don't know if that's the solution. I mean, you know, because, you know, we have a we have some petty people. You got to you got to understand that humans are in charge of these systems and humans are in the systems. So we are petty people. Suppose I don't like you and I cause you to get uh, a guilty Murdoch and you got to get your doggy chop off when you ain't do nothing. So we have to get our systems working correctly first. Um, we also have to, like uh, Kira said, we have to teach people to listen. I, I, and I still can't believe we have to say this, but that women and children are humans. You know what I mean? people, and they, are the people, most, everybody. they are the most vulnerable of humans. You know what I mean? They, are, uh, they tend to be, you know, just by genetic makeup, the, the physically weakest in our society. It is our job as the man to protect our women and children. But yet okay. we have people preying on them and we sit by and do nothing or we pretend that it's not happening. 
we have to step up to the plate. We have to do something. Um, if we know about these things taking place, please report it. Please report it. Even if it's your cousin, if it's your auntie, if it's your daddy, if it's yeah. your ma, anybody. If you know something is happening and it shouldn't be, if someone is being molested, someone is being uh, uh, taken advantage of, please yes. report it. Just because they are family doesn't mean that you have to sit by idle and not do anything because exactly. of that loyalty. That that You don't have to be loyal to your family to that degree. You understand? Please report it. Because I know a lot of a lot of you know these pedophiles. A lot of you know these predators. And y'all mm. ain't saying nothing about it. Y'all ain't getting in that because it ain't y'all or it ain't y'all children. We have to be more empathetic. We can't wait till it hits us directly in our home to do something about it. Because, you know, if you don't do anything... Then unfortunately, it may end up right in your home. And the very thing I you were trying to avoid. You. And then it would be too late. But I'm ready. I look like I don't know what's going on with Chrissy's situation yet. We could see an error, but clearly she can't hear us. She tapping on something there. I don't know what that is. But um, thank you so much for joining us, uh, people. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your shares, your likes, all your reactions. Thank you so much, Kira, for jumping on. I appreciate you for joining. Always Thanks appreciate your right. contributions. Thank you, Chrissy. Chrissy Waven. Uh, you know, I always appreciate you. And I, I, I don't know if she can hear me, but um, for those of you that want to follow Chrissy on a daily basis, she's on YouTube. Chrissy Love Live to the World on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe. She's on every weekday in between 2 to 4. Um, so go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and like I said at the beginning, we have a YouTube channel as well. Search for the Under the Rug Podcast on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel and like our Facebook page. I, trust me, you all think I don't be noticing, right? I send you all the invite to like the page, and you all don't like the page. I know who you all is. I can start calling your name out. I can start writing a list of all the people I invite to like the page, and they ain't like the page yet, and I can shame all of you all for not liking the page. So please go ahead, like the page, so you can know when we go live, because I, I, we used to be on time every week, every uh, Thursday at 530 but like I said, I'm super busy now um, with dealing with my store. So it may be different times. I may have to adjust. So if you want to know when we're going live, please go ahead and like the page. That's how you will get the notifications. Um, and we, we want to have you joining. We want to have you continuing to comment and support. So thank you so much for your support. Once again, Kira, thank you. We must have you back again soon. We, we just can't be this come. long, man. Come, 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 come. For sure. I can hit you up most definitely. And Christina. You know how we do it, even though you probably can't hear me. But um, we appreciate you guys. And until next time, peace out. Love you, Chrissy. Love you. Bye.